hello now in this video i am motivating you to watch managing time videos so what will we learn from each of the four videos that uh, i suggest you to watch well uh, the first video on different project types and their different management approaches uh, that is not particularly uh, connected to time and managing time but uh, it can be a, a prelude to understand the various management approaches in different project types and in different contexts and in that sense that also applies to different time management approaches. So I think that that is very useful to, let's say, start with. Then another video about critical chain project management. I want to explain you what you might want to look at when you are looking at the method or the approach of critical chain project management. Uh, the approach was originally uh, developed by Eliahu Goldratt. Uh, and uh, the approach or the method CCPM, it uh, focuses on resources and uh, assumes that people are constraints in schedules and timing. And one concept that comes up there is buffers that we understand uh, kind of a, the role of buffers uh, that allow us to delay or use those uh, time buffers if needed. And uh, the main thing there is the teaming up of people and be building joint ownership among uh, the project team or people, uh, for example, ownership of on buffers, that people feel that uh, that is a kind of a common thing uh, to have the buffers there and then collectively we can use the buffers if uh, we make delays and so on. In general, in these managing time videos uh, here, all messages that I, we, we hope that you get from there is the kind of organizing and managing uh, the project organization and managing the people. Even though we talk about schedules, scheduling, buffers and so on. So, uh, the really the core or the soul of the thing is uh, to kind of uh, team up people or organize uh, collaboration among people. Also in these uh, other uh, videos uh, when we are talking about different project management methods there. Okay, uh, I explain uh, with few words so that you can get an idea about what the critical chain project management uh, might be about. So, um, let's assume that we have, uh, we have uh, two activities here. For example, two sequential activities. And uh, this first uh, activity is under the responsibility of the green guy and the second activity is run by the blue guy. Okay. Uh, if these two guys form a project and they collaborate with each other, that is actually what uh, this critical chain project management says that if you uh, do the projects, for example, the first time or even if you repeat some uh, similar project that you have done before. So these guys may agree that they 
put their activities to be run in half of the duration that originally maybe could be scheduled for those activities. People are really excited about tight targets, but still realistically uh, achievable ones. Okay, now we have uh, here then a project where uh, we could maybe run the project um, in half of the time that was originally planned. But one message here is uh, by Goldratt uh, in this critical chain uh, that uh, these guys then would put the rest of the durations of their activities to the end of the project. So there is a buffer, a project buffer that these guys can use if uh, they delay with these really tight uh, activity uh, durations. So there is no problem if they kind of eat uh, the buffer, uh, but still uh, they might achieve the outcomes uh, much earlier than uh, in this original situation where the guys uh, individually would have uh, built some reserves for their uh, own individual activities. So it is a kind of a teaming up these two guys and kind of a sharing the interest of doing the project in a, a quite short time. And then uh, the buffer offers them safety. So no problem if they uh, 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 do, uh, the, do, do make delays in, the, in this uh, kind of a tight, uh, in this tight schedule. And as they are together running the project, uh, they are more alert, for example, this blue guy, to continue uh, his activity right away when uh, the uh, green guy finishes the activity. For example, if the green guy happens to finish the activity even earlier, when these guys are teamed up to really to make a short project and do it effectively, this blue guy uh, can start uh, the project right away when uh, the green guy's activity finishes early. Normally, when we have uh, the situation of uh, planning project schedules and agreeing of when this uh, activity gets completed and then kind of uh, transferring uh, the outcome to the next uh, guy. So uh, it uh, happens in a pre-planned uh, uh, schedule and this guy is not necessarily ready to take uh, his activity on and, uh, and, and receive this guy's results uh, if uh, uh, there is no kind of a, this kind of a uh, uh, joint ownership of the project that might be uh, achieved with this critical chain scheduling. In this video, this critical uh, chain project management uh, video, so uh, I am talking in, in this video about uh, buffer sizing. There is no scientific approach to this, as you can understand. This is a kind of an idea of uh, the project team to agree how, uh, uh, let's say, uh, fast we can do the project. And I am referring uh, there to uh, a book chapter 
of written by Leach. And I suggest in this video that, okay, you could read the Leach uh, book chapter and so on, but uh, I would say that uh, don't mind about uh, that message in that video. So uh, just understand that uh, uh, there might be various different kinds of approaches to how to size the buffers, whether you put the uh, activities, original uh, activity durations in half or in, uh, um, let's say, e even uh, less or, or, or more than, than half of the original duration. So uh, just don't need to look at the Leach uh, book chapter and I don't even think that uh, uh, I am interested to distribute or share that uh, to you. Okay, but then uh, let's uh, go to the third video, Agile Project Management by Teemu Toivonen. And uh, then there, the message is the kind of a flexibility, making people work together, involving even the customer to participate in the project. Those who are knowledgeable about uh, software engineering projects or information system or IT projects know uh, agile methods. Uh, one of the met methods which is dominant is the Scrum. And uh, uh, we want to uh, give you also a glimpse uh, with, through this video about this kind of a management uh, approach. Again, uh, with a focus on organizing, organizing among people. And then the fourth video, Design Structure Matrix, DSM. That comes from a new product development or innovation project uh, uh, area. Uh, and it is about modeling information flows and finding a perfect team composition by allocating a bunch of coupled activities to the same team. So again, there is the kind of a message of how to organize. Uh, among people. And this design structure matrix video is made uh, by or provided uh, to you by Jere Lehtinen. And uh, in the next uh, um, picture here, I'm going to um, tell you the idea. Uh, in the design structure matrix, but then when you look at the video, you understand more about the method. If we have a project where we have activities A, B, C, D, E, and F, so um, we make a matrix where we put uh, these uh, activities uh, as columns and as rows. And uh, this describes uh, the mm, information flows and it describes the information flows in the following uh, manner. So um, those uh, um, activities in the columns, uh, they transfer uh, information to activities uh, in the rows. So, for example, this activity B transfers uh, information to activities C and F. And uh, also, uh, uh, those tasks in uh, the kind of a, uh, rows, uh, they uh, require information from those activities. Uh, in the columns. For ex example, uh, the activity D requires or receives information from activities E and F. Well, yes, this is this is the kind of a I, I idea. Uh, then. Uh, we start organizing, and, and you can 
look how this uh, design structure matrix is organized or kind of solved uh, by looking at uh, this Jere Lehtinen's video. Uh, we uh, start organizing uh, the order of activities in the following manner. Uh, first, uh, we look at the rows uh, that are empty, there are no crosses. So uh, this means that uh, activity B, for example, doesn't receive uh, information from any other uh, activity. And that is a good candidate uh, as the first activity. So the idea is to uh, move this row above A when we change the order. There is B, A, C, D and, and, and so on. But when we move uh, this uh, kind of a row upwards, we must also change uh, the column that comes uh, from, uh, from that move so that uh, here uh, in the columns we have the same uh, order. So there will be B, A, C and so on. So we have the same uh, activity orders here. And uh, when we have uh, certain um, information loops here, so we must collapse uh, these uh, activities again by changing uh, the rows, uh, the columns and rows so, so that we uh, move uh, the kind of uh, information sending activities as, as up as possible. And uh, when you look the video, this is actually the solution that Jere Lehtinen in his video ends up to. You can see that almost all uh, information dependencies are below the diagonal. Which means that if we execute the project in this order, so uh, it flows smoothly in this order so that uh, the preceding activities provide information for the succeeding activities and there are no problems. But if uh, there are crosses, so in marking information flows above the diagonal, so there they might be a potential problems or not problems actually in this case. This just indicates that these are the areas of uh, coupled activities that exchange information between each other back and forth. And now the conclusion is that it is beneficial, for example, to give uh, the activities K and L to the same team so that the team members can, can manage the information exchange between each other. And the same applies to J and F and then activities uh, D, H and E where uh, this uh, activity bunch uh, should be allocated to same team. And this is kind of a the kind of an organizational implication. So we cannot necessarily manage only by uh, the project by uh, planning in detail the activities and the sequences and so on, but uh, we give the people, the teams responsibility to uh, do it uh, smoothly. Okay. Um, so that was that was it. And what I went through is these four videos and uh, really the purpose of this video was to motivate you to watch the managing time videos and understand some of the messages that are connected to organizing. Okay. Happy looking of those videos when you uh, dive into them. See you. Bye.